In this chapter, we will be studying limits. In this lesson, we will be studying infinite series. All right, so everybody, we're going to talk about infinite series today. Now, a series is just the sum, okay, the sum of the terms in a sequence. So a pattern of, of numbers, and we're going to add them all up. Now, where I teach, uh, students have already been exposed to this concept of a series. And in fact, we've already looked at infinite series. Uh, we're just going to take a quick look at it in a, a calculus sense. Um, and we're going to take a look at a, a couple of different, um, just a different little tweaks that we uh, can apply to this equation and then the use of this equation here. Now, just as an example, uh, let's talk about the sum, just so that we understand what's going on here, because this idea of an infinite series um, has really befuddled a lot of people in history. Okay, so just to talk about this here, let's find the sum of three tenths plus three one hundredths plus three one thousandths and ten thousandths and so on. And our dot 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 there means that this is going on infinitely. Now, asking it in this way is a little bit confusing. Okay, now we can definitely see the terms of a sequence growing here, where our our common ratio here is going to be one tenth. But this is a lot easier to to see here. Okay, when we consider the decimal equivalent, and when you do that, okay, three tenths becomes point three, three one hundredths becomes point zero three, three thousandths becomes point zero zero three, and so on. And when you add up all of these together, we are going to get point three repeating. Okay, and we know that that is equivalent to one third, or at least you should you should have enough experience in in kind of past math classes to know that point three three repeating is going to be equivalent to one third. Now, what's amazing about this, okay, is that and as we have it written down here, is that in a, a an infinite sum can in fact converge to a finite value, and that actually has been an issue uh, in the past that has caused um, a, a a lot of people some problems here because that is not intuitively obvious. And in fact, uh, I'm going to go through this in just a little bit more detail in a second, but there was a, a mathematician or a philosopher a long time ago uh, named Zeno, and he he discussed this and he introduced several several paradoxes. I'm going to talk about one here just in a second to, to illustrate this. But the whole point here, the assumption was for the for a very long time that if you had an infinite number of terms, regardless of how small they were, okay, that if you added those all up, an infinite number of small items is still going to add up to an infinite, uh, infinitely large value. But we've got an example right here where that's not true, where we do have an infinite sum and the result is definitely a finite value. Now let's take a couple seconds here. And we're just going to talk about uh, Zeno. Okay, everybody, so let's talk about Zeno, okay? Now, here's one of his paradoxes. Now, please don't don't uh, <laughs> take this to the bank. Uh, when I'm really just paraphrasing the idea here. So here's the way this, this goes, at least this is one of them. So here, we've got Achilles, okay? And Achilles is going to have a race with, actually, I can do better than that. He's going to have a race with a turtle. Okay, there's our turtle. Now, the reason why Zeno uses Achilles is because Achilles is a, is a demigod, okay? He's he's half god, half human. Um, nowadays, though, that maybe doesn't make quite as much sense uh, kind of toward our, our modern sensibilities. So let's maybe not call it Achilles anymore. Let's say that this is the Flash, okay? So... Man, this guy's going fast here. So that's the point that he's trying to make. Okay, that this that when he talks about Achilles, this is a hero. This is a superhero. Well, let's talk about our superhero. Let's call it the Flash here. Now, here's how the argument goes: uh, the Flash and this turtle here are going to have a race. Okay, but here's the thing: the Flash is a nice guy, so he gives the turtle a head start. Uh, so when when the Flash finally goes here, here's what's going to happen. The flash is going to quickly run and catch up with the turtle. However, in the amount of time that it took the, the flash to catch up with the turtle, the turtle will have moved forward a little bit. That is totally okay, though, because 
what the flash will do, the flash will keep running here and the flash will catch up to where the turtle went to. However, in the amount of time that it took the, uh, the flash to catch up with the turtle again, uh, the turtle's going to move forward a little bit. That's okay. The flash will continue to keep moving there and the flash will catch up to where the turtle is. However, that is not where the turtle is anymore. That's where the turtle was and the turtle keeps moving forward. Now, Zeno argued that this would happen infinitely, okay? And because this would happen infinitely, okay, that no matter what the flash did, no matter how fast he went, it would always take him a little bit of time to get caught up with the the turtle. But in that little bit of time, the turtle will have then moved forward. Doesn't matter how slow the turtle's going, that will always be the case. And so as a result, the flash can never catch up. They will, they will never meet. Now, his, his colleagues, even back then, would have looked at Zeno and said, hello, Zeno, watch me. And they would go run up and catch up with the, the turtle. You know, they see a turtle there, they'd go run after it, they grab it, catch it, say, look, I caught it. And Zeno's response would be like, I know, right? So the question is, where am I wrong? Okay, where in my logic here, in this whole thing right here, where is the mistake being made? Because we know, obviously, from experience that we can catch up with the turtle. So where am I wrong? And that wasn't an easy question to answer. And that drove a lot of his peers crazy. And actually, it wasn't until much, much later in history that we have an understanding of, of what the error is in Zeno's line of thinking. Okay. So now let's take a look at a, at a more concrete example here. Let's take a look at the sum. Okay, we're going to find the sum of this geometric sequence, one half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus one sixteenth and so on. Okay, where our first term is a half and then we're obviously multiplying by a half as well. That's our common ratio. Now, to, to understand or to figure out what the sum of this infinite series is, what we often will do is we'll create a sequence of sums. Okay. So we'll take a look at the first sum, which is just that first term, okay? And that's a half here. Then we'll take a look at the second sum, which is the sum of the first two terms. And we get 0.75. Then we'll look at the sum of the first three terms. So what we're doing is we're creating a brand new sequence here, okay, where these are the terms in our sequence and so on and so forth. But each sequence represents the sum of this sequence. So I, this is, gets sort of... Uh, there's there's layers of the thinking here, and I don't want you to get caught uh, to get lost in this. This is ultimately the the series that we're working on, which is the sum of this sequence right here. Okay, but what we do to find the sum of the entire sequence is we break it down into sums of the pieces: the first piece, then the first two pieces, then the first three pieces, then the first four pieces, and we create a sequence based on those sums, okay? Now, when we get down to the, the 16th sum, notice that we're at 0.9999874, okay? That's that's starting to, to give us a fairly clear indication of where this is going here. So then what we do here is as we add more terms in the sequence, in other words, as we let n go to infinity, and we do that by applying this limit, Okay, we're going to get that the summation is going to go to 1. Okay, so we can say that the limit as n goes to infinity for this particular sequence, uh, so this particular series, adding these, these terms in the sequence, when we add those all up infinitely, we're going to get just 1. So again, we see that it is possible for an infinite summation to have a finite result. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a look at this exact same summation but I'm going to do it geometrically to show you exactly why this is working the way it is. Okay, everyone, so now let's take a look at a, a geometric interpretation of what we were just looking at. So the sequence that we were looking at, or the series that we were looking at, was this. One half plus one quarter plus one eighth plus dot, 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 out to infinity. And we just saw that when you take those pieces and add them up, the first term and then the first two terms and the first three terms and so on, that when you create that, that sequence of sums, okay, so it's like sum one, 
sum two, sum three, and, and so on, that when you take the limit as n goes to infinity of these sums, so we're treating that Sn as a sequence as opposed to a series, okay, it's a, it's a sequence of series, uh, if you will, that when you do that, we get one as a result. Now, let's take a quick look at what is happening uh, geometrically. So let's say I take a square, okay, now just bear with me, let's assume that that's a square, where each side here is one. So we know that the area here is going to be one. Now, let's just say that I do this, I cut it in half, and I've got this area right here. Now notice that that area is going to be one half. Whoops, and I'm gonna to add to that. Now I'm gonna take half of what remains, okay, and that's gonna be one quarter. Then I'm going to take half of what remains here, and that's going to be one eighth. And I'll take half of what's up here, that will end up being one sixteenth, and so on and so forth. I can keep doing this. Actually, I can keep doing this infinitely. Okay, but notice that I'll never get outside that box. Every time I take a half here, it's always going to be a smaller and smaller and smaller chunk here. But if I'm allowed to do this infinitely, go on with a kind of without ending here, and I know it seems kind of weird, but if I was allowed to do that, the sum total here would be to fill in this entire box here, and the answer would therefore be one. I think that does an excellent job of illustrating uh, the, the fallacy in the thinking here, because the, the thinking was that if you added an infinite number of pieces, no matter how small they got, that the result would necessarily be infinity. And yet here we quite clearly have an example where, yeah, I can add up together this infinite number of pieces and my answer cannot get larger than one. Okay, now, by the way, this is also uh, this little bit right here, what you're seeing right here. This is also the subject of a, of a whole lot of uh, mathematical jokes um, about, anyway, there's a bunch of jokes about mathematicians going into a bar, an infinite number of them ordering drinks. One orders the first, one orders half a drink, one other one is a fourth and whatever. And then the bartender gives them a drink, a beer, says you're all morons. There's a bunch of jokes kind of in that theme there. And now that you've seen this, you should be able to get the joke. And hey, that's isn't that part of what math is all about is understanding the jokes. Okay, so in general, we're going to use S without a subscript to represent the sum of an infinite sequence, okay? So here's essentially what we're getting at with that, okay? So we already saw here that when you take the limit as n goes into infinity of S sub n, that the result is going to be the, the infinite sum of that series. But we're going to let S all by itself refer to that. Just a little bit of notation there. Now, this gives us two different different types of series that we need to talk about here. Convergent series. Convergent series has a finite sum that can be determined. Okay, now both of the, the examples that we've just looked at here were examples of convergent series. The, the 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003 okay, to infinity, and then the 1 half plus 1 quarter plus 1 eighth to infinity. Okay, those were convergent series because we got a finite result here. Now, divergent series, and this is one of the things I absolutely love about mathematicians. How do you define a divergent series? It does not converge, okay? Or divergent series do not converge. Now, this is, it's important to recognize that this does not necessarily mean that the sum goes off to an infinity, which is normally what you might associate with the word divergent, okay? Diverge kind of kind of swaying away, uh, like steering away from, from a value and and going off to infinity. So well, like when they say that a convergent series gives you a finite sum, there's a, a couple of words here that are important. Okay, finite is definitely one of them, but oddly enough, the word a ah is also important here. So when we say that the definition of a divergent series is does not converge or they or a divergent series or they do not converge, like what I've got written here, that is actually saying something really specific, and it's these two pieces here that need to be considered. So first of all, um, if you've got a, a, a sequence, okay, an infinite sequence, and then when you add the pieces together, if the sum tends towards infinity, well, that, okay, that diverges. That does not converge because we are not getting a finite sum. So 
2 plus 4 plus 8 plus so on and so forth, uh, that's going to go off to infinity. That's going to diverge here. But there's another val another way that this could work here. Look at this next series, uh, sorry, series here. 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 off to infinity. What does that sum equal? What's well, an interesting question. I mean, on one hand, you might look at it and say, well, 1 minus 1 is 0. Plus 1 minus 1 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0. So it's going to be 0 plus 0 plus 0. So the whole thing's going to add up to 0. And sure, that's that's true. That's one way to interpret it. However, what if you just ignore this one to begin with? Just ignore it for right now. Pretend that that one's not there. Then look at this. And I've got negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. So I'm going to have an infinite number of zeros and a 1 out front. Well, that's going to add up to 1. So what's the sum? Is it 0 or is it 1? And the question is we don't know. There are two possibilities here. Okay? And the fact is it alternates as you go uh, out to infinity. This always just alternates between those two. You start off with 1 goes to 0, goes to 1, goes to 0, goes to 1, goes to 0. That's what the sum does. So it just alternates between those two values. So because this does not have a finite sum, it is considered to be a divergent series. So two things that you need to consider here, okay? Whether the, if the sum goes off to an infinity, that means it diverges. If the sum alternates between two or more values, we also consider that divergent. Now we're going to look at a couple more examples here in just a moment here, but just something to remember here while we while we analyze this is that uh, for a geometric series, and that's really what we're going to focus our attention on, okay, the, the terms are a, then ar, ar squared, dot, 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 out to ar to the n minus 1. And this is your little finite series here, okay? The sum of the, the first n terms of that, and this is, again, something that we expect you've seen before. It's going to be Sn is going to equal a multiplied by 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. We're not going to develop this particular formula here because, again, the assumption is that you have seen this before. We're going to kind of use that as our as our jumping board uh, into the analysis of an, of an infinite series. Okay, everyone, so let's take a quick look at, a, at an example here of, a, of another sequence or a series, I should say. Let's say it's 100 plus 50 plus 25 and on and on to, inf uh, to infinity here. And we want to figure out what our sum is, okay? So what we're going to do here is we already know that S is equal to the limit as N goes to infinity of Sn. So our first goal here is to figure out what Sn is. So let's take a quick look at Sn. Okay, and we know from before that's going to be a multiplied by uh, 1 minus r to the n all over 1 minus r. Okay, and again, we know that from, from previous courses, so that should be fine here. So let's just figure this out here. So Sn is going to equal a, well, the first term in our sequence here is 100. So there we go, 100. And then multiply by 1 minus, okay, now our r value here, we went from 100 to 50 to 25, so obviously we are multiplying by 1 half every time to the n. We're going to take the limit as n goes to infinity here, just a second, over 1 minus 1 half. Okay, so right there, that is our, our summation, our sn. Now, we could simplify this down a little bit, okay? We could simplify this because the denominator 1 minus a half, okay, 1 minus a half is just a half. And then 100 divided by a half, well, we, when we divide by a fraction, we have to multiply by that reciprocal. This is going to be 100 divided, uh, sorry, multiplied by 2, so it'll be 200, multiplied by 1 minus 1 half to the n. Okay, good, that's fine. Now we've got our, our summation here. Now, to find our infinite sum, we're gonna take the limit as n goes to infinity of this Sn, 
And so that's going to be the limit as n goes to infinity of 200 multiplied by 1 minus 1 half to the n. Now, take a look at what happens here. Take a look at what's, what's happening right here. This is where n shows up in that expression. So as n goes to infinity, bear in mind that what, what we've got here is because this is, and then we'll, we'll kind of go up here to describe this, because we've got 1 half to the n, this is the same as, whoops, 1 to the n divided by 2 to the n. Now, 1 to the n, that's, that's straightforward. It doesn't matter what the exponent is on 1. It's just going to be 1. So this is really going to be the same as 1 over 2 to the n. Now, as n goes to infinity, that denominator is going to get larger and larger and larger. But the denominator is going to stay 1. And when the denominator gets larger, remember that the fraction itself gets smaller. Okay? Because the whole... Th the fraction represents the, the piece, okay, the piece of the whole. And what we're doing is we're cutting that whole into a larger and larger and larger number of pieces. Each piece must be getting smaller and smaller. And so what happens here is this piece right here, because of that, that piece right there is actually going to approach zero. Oops, it's going to approach zero. And so when we take the limit as n goes to infinity, we end up with 200 multiplied by 1 minus zero which is just going to end up becoming 200. And that becomes the limit. That becomes that infinite sum that we've been looking for. And that is because of what happens right there. Okay? That's the reason why we are getting this finite sum is because this piece right here that goes to the exponent n, as n goes to infinity, that piece goes to zero. It goes away. Okay. If it didn't go away, then that piece would necessarily become an infinity and, and this, this would diverge. Or we would have a scenario where we were, we were alternating, we're getting some sort of weird result okay, uh, because, of, because of that piece right there. But because it goes to zero, we know that we're going to get a finite sum. And we're going to just summarize that in just a couple seconds here. Now, on the other hand, let's say that our sequence looks something more like this. Let's say it was 3 plus... Uh, let's say 6 plus 12 plus so on and so forth. Okay, and we're trying to figure out what's going on here. Uh, now, again, remembering that S is going to equal the limit as N goes to infinity of SN. So we want to figure out what SN first is. So SN is going to be A 1 minus R to the N over 1 minus R. So SN is going to equal, well, our first term is 3. And then our common ratio here, it looks like we're multiplying by 2 every time. So 2 to the n and over 1 minus 2. Okay, well, the denominator there, 1 minus 2, is just going to be negative 1. And so this is going to be negative 3, 1 minus 2 to the n. Now, to figure out the infinite sum, I will take the limit as n goes to infinity of my sn, which is going to be the limit as n goes off to infinity of negative 3 multiplied by 1 minus 2 to the n. Now, this piece right here, okay, as we just saw before, this piece right here is going to be the issue. Because as the exponent gets larger here, 2 to the n is going to get larger. Okay, and larger without bound. So this right here is going to completely dominate the value of this of this uh, expression here. In the previous example, this term dropped off to zero. And so the other pieces of that expression dominated the value. But here, this is going to dominate the value. And as a result, this is going to go off to an infinity. Okay, this is going to go off to infinity. Now, one minus two, then it's going to be an, uh, like a negative infinity multiplied by that negative three will be a positive infinity. So you Sometimes you want to consider the direction that this is moving here, but this is going to go off to an infinity or kind of depending on, on who's uh, walking you through this course here, you might even simply say that this does not exist, <clears throat> okay, because you're, you're getting a value that isn't a finite value. All we know, or actually all we might really want to say here is that this is going to diverge, 
In fact, that's probably the best answer you can give here is, is instead of saying infinity or doesn't exist, say that it diverges. The sum here is going to be divergent. And now a moment to summarize our findings. Okay, so everybody, let's just summarize what we've what we've gotten up to this point here. The sum of an infinite geometric series is given by this expression right here. So what we do is we throw the limit here as n goes to infinity of our expression for a finite geometric sum. But bear in mind here that if the r value, if the common ratio is less than one, and this is what I've, we've been trying to illustrate with the last couple of examples, if the absolute value of that common ratio is less than one, some sort of fraction, what happens here is all of our terms get smaller. So we went from like, for example, one half to one quarter to one eighth to one sixteenth, and so on. They were getting smaller as we went along there. Then what happens here is when you take the limit, this term right here, it's the only one that's affected by that n, that's going to drop off to zero like it does right here. And we ultimately end up getting this expression. So the sum is equal to the first term divided by one minus the common ratio. And that is a convergent series. On the other hand, if that common ratio, okay, is going to be some value greater than or equal to one. Now, it's the absolute value, by the way, greater than or equal to one, then the series is necessarily divergent. And so you can immediately tell just by looking at the common ratio whether or not it's going to converge or diverge. Okay, and you, all you got to do is, is make sure that you remember this pattern right here. That makes some, for some fairly straightforward questions on an exam. Now, one sort of question that we, we like to give our students here is if you've got a series, okay, where the common ratio is a binomial, okay? So in this case right here, we are multiplying every step along the way. We are multiplying by 2x minus 5. The question is for what values of x will this particular series converge? Well, we just saw that if it's going to converge, the common ratio has to be less than 1. Now, in this case, though, the common ratio is a little bit more complicated, okay? Uh, it's this binomial expression right here, okay? So what we do here is we know that the common ratio, the absolute value of the common ratio has to be between negative 1 and 1. The absolute value of the 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 ratio has got to be less than 1. So that means 2x minus 5 has got to be greater than negative 1. It's also got to be less than positive 1. Now, not or equal to. Remember, that or equal to is what makes this diverge. So in order to solve this, what we would do is we would add 5 to both sides. So negative 1 plus 5 is 4. 1 plus 5 is going to be 6. And then we divide both sides here by 2 to get x by itself here. So and 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. And so we see here that as long as x is between the values 2 and 3, then this series up here will converge. Okay. Now, there's a whole lot more that could be said about infinite series. Uh, really, we could. But in this particular course that we're going through right now, there really is no point in spending much more time on it than this. What I really need you to get out of this, okay, uh, for, for the course that we're going through right now is I need this to be very clear that if the R value, if the common ratio, if the absolute value of it is less than one, then you're going to use this as your expression to figure out the infinite sum, the series converges. If R is greater than or equal to one, that's the absolute value of R, then it's going to diverge. And I also need you to, re to understand how to attack a problem like this. It makes a very, very simple problem for us to put on your exam. Okay. As long as you've got this binomial R value, it's got to be between negative 1 and 1 in order for that to converge. So I just need you to remember to put that between negative 1 and 1. And then when you're solving for X here, you do the exact same thing kind of on both sides Okay, on the negative one and on the positive one there. So again, we added five, then divided by two on both sides there. Okay, I hope that helps. Uh, again, there's really not much point in us spending more time on it than that. Okay, from here, we're going to move on and take a look at derivatives. Derivatives.